Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edible Paper. Um, this is my podcast where I talk about stuff while I am on perfectly legal Delta 9 gummies. So, 2023 is almost over. 2024 is about to start in a few days as of recording this. Um, I'm glad 2023 is over. I'm glad that it's starting 2024. Even though it doesn't matter, it's all, you know, it's like humans created days and weeks and months. So, like, you know, it, I don't see why what year it is really matters that much. But, you know, I get it. Humans like little, you know, pieces of time they can think back on or whatever. You know, humans are humans. So, I want to talk about my faves of 2023 on my notes I wrote favorites of 2024 and that's impossible because it hasn't happened yet but uh I just wanted to talk about some of the CDs that came out this year that I was really happy about that really um I don't know just really did it for me uh they're not in any particular order well actually I think they're in chronological order as far as when they came out because I was just looking on Wikipedia to remind myself what albums came out this year so um, so as I talk about them, I'll, I'll talk about how, like, you know, whether I think it's one of my favorites or just one that I liked. So first we're going to talk about, uh, Ava Max's album Diamonds and Dance Floors. Um, I love Ava Max in, like, 2021, I think. She was my most played artist of that year. I really like her a lot. She's very cool. Um, I really love this album, too. Um, Maybe You're the Problem is, like, oh, god it's the best fucking song ever and I feel so called out when I listen to it and I'm like maybe I am the problem you know so I just feel attacked by that song but I really like it um I like the title track uh Diamonds and Dance Floors I like um Gonna Love You Like It's the Last Night on Earth I can't remember the title but I really like that one too um it was interesting listening to it because it's one of those things where I was, like, I was like listening and I'm like, oh my god, I think this album is about the pandemic and I think, you know, she did kind of confirm that that was the case. Like it was really like an album defined by like being stuck inside and not being able to go out and, you know, have fun and live your life. So I, I don't know, I really like the album. I like the juxtaposition of like talking about something so traumatic in like human history and just turning it into a pop album like come on it's it's pretty genius so i like that album a lot is it one of my favorite albums of the year mm, i mean yes because it's an album that you know <laughs> i've liked enough to put on this list but um yeah i like that album a lot it's it's one of my favorites i think um i feel like i'm gonna say that about every album it's it's a uh, uh, maybe it's a favorite maybe i just like it a lot either way it doesn't matter. So next album that came out was Paramore's album, This Is Why. <sighs> what to say about This Is Why. Um, I just love the imagery in the album, uh, the songs, like even just like down to like the looks, like in Running Out of Time, the looks in that video. Are you fucking kidding me? The looks. The looks, honey. It's the looks. Um... It's it's just great, and I remember the first drawing of the year I wanted to do this year was for The News by Paramore off that album, because it was just, I don't know, I wasn't very hopeful for 2023, and so that was just kind of my way of expressing that. Um, And the song really is about seeing, like, all the war and pain on Earth. Like, I think at the time it was, like, with the Ukraine and Russia, which is still going on. Um, it was just such a scary moment. And, you know, it was like I was just stuck to looking at the news about it and everything. And so that song really resonated with me because it's like... You know, I just want to turn it all off, but we also have, you know, the privilege to be able to turn it off. I feel like, did I already talk about this? I don't know if I talked about this in another episode or if it's the deleted episode, because I did record an entire episode and delete it because 
I did not like, <laughs> I did not understand what I was talking about. It was, it was just incomprehensible nonsense. And it was about like some deeper topics too. And I feel like that would have just been almost disrespectful. And I, you know, it, I don't know. All right, so I lost my train of thought, but at the end, like, Paramore, this is why it's a great album. That's just really what I want to say. I love the songs. I love the imagery. I, I love the band. So that's definitely um, one of my favorites of the year. Um, Kelsey Ballerini, Rolling Up the Welcome Mat, it also came out in February. And this is one of two albums that I put three exclamation points after and circled. I really love this EP, this album. Oh my god. When I heard it the first time and watched the short film, like, videos of it, it was just like, I got hit in the chest with just, like, emotions. And, like, it just resonated so heavy with me. I think because, like, sometimes I, I struggle with the thought of being married and like what if one day something goes terribly wrong and that happens because divorce is so common and I don't think I'm gonna get a divorce I love my husband I love you know being married uh, but you know things happen and that just the thought of that scares me because I love what I have so much and um I don't know it just it was a very like a heartbreaking what if scenario that happens to a lot of people and I don't know it just uh it got me together. It is such a good album. It's honestly, a lot of the songs are my most played on Spotify. Um, because it just, it is, it's great. It is one of the two favorite albums of the year. Or one of three. I didn't put exclamation points to it, but Olivia Rodrigo, come on. That's just a, a hint of what's coming. So the next one is, like I said, Kelsey Ballerini, Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. That is another one of that is like I mean my absolute favorite like the top tier top shelf shit it's Miley Cyrus Endless Summer Vacation Kelsey Ballerini Rolling Up the Welcome Mat and Guts by Olivia Rodrigo end of podcast that's it that's all I would need to say but I do want to list my other favorites and the other ones that I like so Endless Summer Vacation where do I begin it is so amazing I love it so much it is so beautiful, it's fun, it's heartbreaking, it's, I think it's Miley Cyrus at the top of her game, like, I, I am blessed to bear witness to Miley Cyrus, like, you know, just really finding a spot in the world like that, and it, it just being such a beautiful, magical, powerful woman, and I'm so proud to be a fan of Miley Cyrus. I always have, and I always will. I love her so much. You can't change my mind. It is such a good album. Um, also, one of the most played songs of this year in my Spotify Top 5 was also a song from this album. Shockingly, it was Jaded. Um, I love the song Jaded, and I guess it's like my favorite song on the album. I'm kind of shook by that, because I always really liked the... Um, it's like the second song on the album. Mm. Rose Colored Lenses. That's what it is. I didn't even have to stop. I really like that one. Um, it's such a good album, though. I mean, I, I, I know, like, I talked about Bangers a few months ago and what a great album that is, but I feel like compared to Endless Summer Vacation, Bangers ain't shit. Bangers is, is nothing compared to Endless Summer Vacation. That's a lot. It is such a good album. I I will live and die for this for this record. So moving on to Boy Genius. I'm gonna lump both their uh projects for this year in one spot. Um the record and the rest. Um I like them both a lot. Obviously I love the trio, but realistically like I didn't listen to that album very much. So, you know, the those really good songs stick out and I really like it and I really like all three members, um, Lucy Dacus, Phoebe Bridgers, and Julian Baker. Mm. 
my, my poor mind this evening. But I, I really liked them a lot, and I just, yeah, I feel like I should have listened to it more because it's really good. The rest, also, kind of the same. Like, uh, like, I can't say every song on either one are, like, the most memorable, but I feel like it's a good body of work, and I do really like some of the songs. Um, particularly the one from the rest of uh, Voyager. That's like, that's my jam right now. So I really like that. And I think they uh, were two really good uh, projects. So the next one is Melanie Martinez album Portals. Uh, very weird. Um, I, I do like that she picked a more broad theme. I think she really got to like stretch her like songwriting muscles because for Crybaby, you know, it's like baby gaga goo goo stuff. And then for <laughs> the second album is for whatever reason when she's in high school. So it's or in school. So it's like K-12. And I felt like the songs were just like almost bursting at the seams because they didn't know what they wanted to be. Um, well, they did know what they want to be, but they couldn't be it because they were in these constraints of this has to be like baby related or kid related and the next one has to be all school related so it just felt like she was shoving a lot of different concepts into one that they didn't necessarily mesh all the time so I think this album really gave her a chance to shine and show like the lyricism she's capable of because she goes into some very deep very detailed eloquent sections that I don't even know what the homegirl's talking about I really don't. It's some, like, spirit spiritualism shit, but I appreciate it. I, I like that she has the freedom to be that weird and that wacky and so creative, and yeah, I really like Melanie Martinez. I, I just, I, I really do. Next, my husband's gonna be happy with this one, is, um, Not Without My Ghost by The Amity Affliction. The Amity Afflicted. Um, I really like this album. I'm have been working on through the year a series of drawings based on every song on the album for my husband. I'm about halfway through, but I mean, it is it is a really beautiful album, and I really do like Amity Affliction. I'm not just saying it because my husband can hear me, because I don't have to lie about that kind of <laughs> stupid stuff. Like, I really like Amity Affliction. They're a really great brand. Ugh, a really great band. I must say, I do not really mix up, but like, I just can't remember who I'm thinking about, but like, um... Bring Me the Horizon and Amity Affliction. For whatever reason, they just seem very similar to me. And so I just mixed them up, even though, like, I know who I'm talking about. Um, but it's a great album. Also sort of in the rock sphere, uh, Sleep Token, Take Me Back to Eden. Really good album as well. Um, Brittany Broski talked about it on her podcast, and I really like them. It's very, like, dark and, um, uh, you know, like, just <laughs> really fucking dark, in the words of Katy Perry. Um, but it also has, like, it's really beautiful pop moments, or, like, piano moments, and it's such a gorgeous album, and it's sonically so pleasing, and I love a theme, I love a concept album. Ugh, give me something good, give me a, uh, give me a, just a full story in a, an album. Like, that is what I love. Because I just love the concept of albums and CDs. And, like, it's just such a beautiful, like, canvas to display, like, your emotions. Like, you can show different aspects of it in one full piece of work with individual pieces of work inside it. It's, it's crazy. But I love, love, love that kind of stuff. So, it's a, it's a good album. And I, uh, thank you, Brittany Bursky, for recommending them, I tell you. Um, the next is going to be for Kelly Clarkson's album, Chemistry. Um, this is another one where, like, I can't say all the songs stuck out to me, but the ones that did, did. I Hate Love with Steve Martin. So beautiful. She doesn't even sound like her when she's singing it, which is weird, but it's so different and neat, and I really love it. Um, the song, her more recent ones, I'm trying to think. Mine and Me. Um, I really like Mine 
the best, especially like there's a remix of it and that's really dancey, but it still retains like all of like the sadness and the pain and like all the emotion and it's so good. I mean, Kelly Clarkson is also out here doing the damn thing still. Like, she's so great. I know one thing about her that I hate is, like, people always comment on her weight. And it's like, yeah, that's so over with. It's played out. Like, get over it. Who cares how much she weighs? She is a staple of American culture. <sighs> I get very amped up about it, as you can tell. Um, she's actually the first secular artist I saw live. Um, the first, like, concerts I went to were Winter Jam, which the Christian girlies who know, just know. Um, but, uh, that's sort of been, like, its own category. Like, going to, like, a show, an experience, like, entertainment. Kelly Clarkson's in a whole different realm than fucking Winter Jam. Sorry. Not sorry to them. So, let's move on. Next, I'm gonna lump these two in together because they're both I mean it's Taylor Swift Speak Now and 1989 both Taylor's versions of course I love the albums I love the albums when they came out I love them now I know there's a lot of um discourse about 1989 sounding too different but it's like kind of like what Jack Antonoff said it's like you're not going to be able to replicate every single like sound the same twice um and that's all right I feel like it kind of refreshes the album some you know it's it's a bit different like that's I, I just I don't know I like it because I know before I really wanted them to be exactly the same but I think this gives the song a the songs a chance to like have a little bit of breathing room and grow a little bit further in what you know she wanted them to be so love both albums um Especially, like I said, 1989. Uh, the bonus tracks. Uh, I would say I like the Speak Now bonus tracks better than 1989's. I don't really know why that is. Like I said, I think it's the the style change with the 1989 bonus tracks. Like, they're so good, but it's just such, like, a... I don't know. It feels like a completely different album. Same thing with, like, the bonus tracks of Midnight's. That sounded like a different album. And, I mean, I'm glad she includes them. It's just crazy, like, I don't necessarily feel like they were always for that album. So, yeah, well, that's it on those. I mean, what can you say? The music's good. I I love the music. Um, Next, we're going to go to... I wrote this down, and I feel bad. I wrote down Carly Rae Jepsen's The Loveliest Time. And I like some songs out there, but, girl, I can't name one of those songs. Um, Maybe Psychedelic Switch. Uh, I, I don't... That's... I don't know if that's on The Loneliest or The Loveliest Time. I know it's a good album. Like, it's enjoyable to listen to, and I love Carly Rae Jepsen. Is it my favorite album of the year? Not, not by a long shot, but, you know, it's... I like it, because it's Carly Rae Jepsen. I mean, come on. You just... Just accept it. Uh, next is kind of the same thing as Ash Nico's Weed Killer. Um... I love the song Dying Star with her and Ethel Kane, and I think that just brings the whole album up for me, because that is, like, my favorite song she's ever done. Um, and it's with Ethel fucking Kane! I mean, come on! And what an unsuspected, unsuspected, unexpected, like, collaboration. I, in fact, I drew something for it that's on a canvas on my wall, and I'm looking at it right now. Love Ethel Kane. <laughs> I love how the Ash Nico album is only on my favorites because of how much I love a song with Ethel Kane. So maybe it's not my favorite album of the year, and maybe I don't even like the album, but I love that fucking song, and I can't say enough about it. Next is the third, like, absolute favorite album of the year with um, Miley Cyrus and Kelsey Ballerini is, of course, Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. I mean, everyone saw it come in. We all know how good Olivia Rodrigo is. And you knew that her second album was going to be on the top list of all the gays that love her. And it's just so good. Like, millennial gays, sorry. It's like, it's, it's, something just deeply resonates with her music for a millennial gay. I can't explain it. And, uh, I'm happy that she's an artist. I, I'm happy to see music is in such good hands. I, I love it. Um. We're going to move on to Demi Lovato's album, Revamped, which has, like, rock, um, versions, like, of her older songs. And I feel like Taylor doing Taylor's versions kind of really brought this thing back. Like, just re-release an album you did, just slightly different. And it's like, that's genius. 
Because you don't, I don't know, it's, it's wild. Um, but I really like it. It's, it's just, it's fun and it's liberating. And, um, honestly, I, I will say that the one for Don't Forget is not my favorite. That was kind of disappointing for me because Don't Forget to me, even though it's like her, one of her first songs, it is so good. And I, I just feel like almost nothing can like compare to that. So, you know, I probably hold it on a pretty high like standard, but I, it's, it's, you know, I, I love it, of course, because it's the song, and I love the song. So, I mean, it's a good album. So, next up is Chapel Roan, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess. Um, I heard Chapel Roan the first time with, um, what fucking song is that? <laughs> Pink Pony Club. And I just... It's such a good song, and so I followed, you know, a few of the single releases and everything, and I'm so happy that she came out with this album. It is so good. It is so fun. It is so gay. It is so camp. It's just fucking amazing. It is fucking amazing! And, I mean, I just can't talk about it enough, like, say enough good things about it. Because it's just a fun album, and this is another one that I covered in a podcast previously, so I don't have to, you know, go on forever about it. <laughs> right now next is uh doja cat's album scarlet which i'm gonna put up there with like the loveliest time and those other albums where it's like i know i like the album because i like the vibe and it stuck out to me but i can't name you a song off there not right now um that one that everyone was so upset about i mean i feel like they're always upset at doja cat about something and i feel like that's kind of what pulled me in I'm like she's so problematic and she's so herself that like I I think I like her so I think I like Doja Cat now and it's a it's a good album I can't remember the name of that song that's really gonna bug me now paint the town fucking red that's the name of that song I'm sorry I'm so fucking high I I really don't know what to tell you guys um but I think that adds to the fun because it's like we're going on one tangent, and then it's like, it's life is cut short, and we're gone past it. I don't remember. It's it's out there. Um, next, we're going to talk about Slater's Starfuck Deluxe. Um, it's crazy, because I talked about Slay Slater <laughs> in the deleted episode. Um, so I feel like I've already talked to everybody about this, but it is such a good fucking album. I mean, it is so, like, it is, like, a filthy, like, dirty, like, electronic, just pop masterpiece. It is so fucking, like, sleazy, and, ah, uh, it just gives me, like, 2010s pop. Holy shit. It really just takes me back, and I love it so, so much. I, 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 I won't elaborate any further. I just love it, okay? I just love it a lot. Just, I love it a lot. Next is Dorian Electra's Fanfare. Uh, this is gonna go into the list of albums where I really like the vibe, but don't ask me to name a song. I'm too high for that. Well, Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a, <laughs> a ridiculous song, but I love it. And I like that Dorian Electra's music is like that. Like, some of the stuff is so, like, out there and, like, super wacky, but it's like, oh my god, this is so cool. And they're, like, effortlessly, like, the most weird and most cool person, like, I think in pop music today. Just, I mean, come on. Dorian Electra is doing the damn thing. Next, Troy Sivan's uh, Something to Give Each Other. This is another one where it's, like, particular songs that really stuck out to me. Like, What's the Time Where You Are? Oh, my God. I was listening to it, listening to it on the way to work at, like, 5 in the morning. And, like, so I'm, like, half asleep driving my car. And that song comes on. And I'm, like, this song just saved my life. <laughs> it's so fun and, like dancey but it's so beautiful and emotional and I'm like what is the time where you are you know I just get it <laughs> I just get it um an international through line to your heart like oh my god I don't I can't explain it. it's another one of those songs where it just like it hit me like a ton of bricks and it's one of my favorite songs of the like the year we are winding it down Poppy's album Zig I love it. It does more pop than she has recently, and I love to see the return to that. I love her rock music. 
Um, but I really love her pop music too. And it's nice to see sort of a little bit of pop, poppy back. Um, I know the one song that really sticks out to me is, um, what is that song? Why can't I remember any fucking names right now? Oh my God. We got it. Knock off. <laughs> I am, I, I'm glad we're getting to the end because this is getting on my nerves. I can only imagine it's getting on y'all's nerves. All two people that listen to this. So thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, the song is knock off. Um, I do find it kind of ironic that she would make a song like this after the whole Mars Argo situation and I know I don't think it's I don't think it means something that deep but like I feel like after that it's like mm, uh, should you really be singing about that Poppy talking about someone being a knockoff I'm sorry I love Poppy but and I love the song and I love you know that she's grown into like a different artist that she I think really wanted to be but to kind of you know, say that somebody else is a knockoff when I feel like that's when her career took off. It's kind of, I think it's kind of funny. What am I saying? Like, Poppy's never going to hear this. <laughs> Who fucking cares? Next, another one where we're going off vibes is Dolly Parton's Rockstar. Or, you know, there's a few songs on it, of course, that I love. Um, this is going to be a controversial opinion. Um, I think, I don't know if she has, like, full-on false teeth now or, like, veneers. But you can tell just by the way her voice sounds, which is cool. Like, I obviously know her voice is going to change. And as you get older, you have to do the stuff to keep yourself healthy and, you know, to the way you want to look. And um, I don't think it affects it that much. It's really only like a little thing, but it's something that I notice a lot. Like, I, I don't like or dislike it. I just notice it's there. But I, I love how ambitious the album is. I wish there were more original songs, but, you know, I, I like that she was like, you know, I'm going to do this my way and a very country music way. And um, I love that about her. I just, come on, if you don't love Dolly Parton, there's something wrong with you. I mean, I worry about people that don't like Dolly Parton. Next and last. Oh, I'm so glad we're at the end because I didn't realize I was going to have so many albums and so much music that I like this year, but duh. Of course I did, because I listened to a lot of music. Uh, I guess I'll throw the movies in at the end. Anyways, Dove Cameron's Alchemical uh, Volume 1. Kind of a weird name. I'm not really feeling the name. It makes it seem kind of like really tryhard-esque. Like, alchemical. Like, weird or mysterious. It's just, I don't know. It sounds kind of silly. But I like the album a lot. Or the EP. Um... I like the songs where it's like a really different vibe for her, but something she's really going into. Not like she was kind of doing, what was she doing? She was doing like a Billie Eilish thing in like one of her songs. I think it was Boyfriend. And I really love it, but it's like, it doesn't sound like unique. So I think she has some ways to go there, but again, she's never going to listen to this. And I love the music anyways. I like her a lot. I really wish we could have seen her as Bubbles in the live-action Powerpuff Girls, but ugh, ill-fated it was, which kind of sucks, because I would love to see that pilot. Hopefully it leaks one day. I would just love to see it. But uh, yeah, that's my favorite uh, music for the year, or music that I really, really liked enough to be on a list. So I hope that you like some of these albums. Tell me which albums you like. Like if you comment anywhere, I think you can comment and ask questions on Spotify now. You know, you can ask on YouTube, whatever. I'm out there. <sighs> so my favorite movies are going to be Barbie because it's Barbie bitch. <laughs> Raggedy Ann could never be a Barbie bitch. It, and it's honestly like, it's so true. It is so fucking true. Raggedy Ann could never be a Barbie bitch. Because they're completely different dolls. Of course she can. Like, it's not like a hateful thing. It's just like it's science or something. But I love Barbie. It's a great movie. Very sad. Like, I don't know if I could necessarily watch it a lot. Because it's very existential. And, like, I'm going to the movies to forget about that kind of bullshit. I don't want to think about how life is fleeting and terrible and patriarchy and all that. I get it. It's real. But, like, ugh, it's, it's almost too much. Like to bear to be reminded of it so often but great movie I loved it I thought it was funny a little too much Ken I'm gonna go out and say it a little too much Ken but great movie I love the movie 
fantastic movie. The next movie, same movie a lot, is the new or the new. Oh my god, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Of course, I'm gonna love the Super Mario Brothers movie. Do you fucking know me? You probably do if you're listening to this. And if you don't, I love Mario. Holy shit, um, it's just so good. And I was happy that they made a movie. And was it perfect? No. Um, but it was fucking beautiful, and it was based on Mario, and I might be just a delusional, like, person who just loves Mario a lot, but I thought it was great, and if you don't think so, you're, um, entitled to your opinion. And that's all I'll say about that. Uh, the other movie that I really liked this year was Scream 6. Um, it's probably gonna be the last Scream, um, for a very long time, which... It's fine, like, I really was kind of excited for a Scream 7, but I feel like it not happening is almost for the better because I don't want the, them to just keep making movies because they can. Like, make a movie when something, like, meaningful comes about. You can't just, I'm sure they will, they're just gonna, you know, replace the lead two actresses and come out with a Scream 7 in, like, three years instead of two years. And hopefully it's good. Um, this is funny because this was another thing I was talking about in that deleted podcast too was Scream 7. I didn't even think about that when I put it down. But yeah, it's just uh, it's unfortunate that both lead actresses are not in it either by force or by choice. And then the director not doing it. It's like, oh, that's the final nail in the coffin. It's not happening. But, like I said, that's almost okay with me because I don't want the series to be tainted. Just I don't want them to just make movies just because. Which, again, it's going to happen one day, but let me enjoy when it's not happening, okay? Let me just enjoy this, please. Thank you. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go because I keep losing train my train of thought. Um, I'm going to have to edit this so much, like when I'm not high as a fucking kite. I just really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode, and like I said... Reach out. Let me know your favorite things of 2024. It doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be movies. It can be anything. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and go. And uh, yeah. Thank you for listening. Adios amigos.